Welcome back to our channel. We're Chloe and Matthew, two wine-loving foodies who have set out to explore the world one bite, sip or slurp at a time. In this series, we're visiting every iconic wine region in Australia to get a lowdown on the juice, the people and what makes it special. In this episode, we explore the Margaret River, one of the world's youngest wine regions. It is somewhat of a prodigy achieving international acclaim at an early age, particularly for its Cabernet Sauvignon and Chardonnay but the soils in which its vines thrive are some of the most ancient here on earth. There's some wine under our belt. Now are we happy? <laughs> what are we doing? Where are we? What's here. your name? ASL. George. <laughs> like, we're in the Margaret River. We're in the Margaret! Finally, like, an actual, like, iconic wine region to share with you guys. We've got a couple of classics to check out, and then the rest of the time we're just gonna bounce around and hit the weird ones. Hit the weird ones. So we're starting out by hitting both. Well, we, we're starting out by hitting the weird ones. We tried to go to Cullen. That was gonna be the first one, but they're closed for a private event. Bow bow. Sons of them right there. So we're going to go to where well, we just went to We just went to Piero. Piero, which I'll insert a couple of clips here. Piero Wines is a project of Michael Peterkin, who has been in the wine industry as well as a country doctor since the 70s. The name is a play on the family name as well as Piero, the original sad clown who is portrayed on the label. This tasting room was friendly and comforting to visit, with wines all showing a simple elegance. As you would expect, the Chardonnay was a standout to us, just as it has been for the international wine community. And now we're heading to Juniper, because that's what Piero, the guy Stuart there, suggested we hit up. So we're going to go to Juniper. Let's go. What a weird name for a winery. I don't think it's weird. You don't think that a gin distillery should be called Juniper? Well, yeah, probably. But... Maybe this property had a bunch of junipers on it when they developed it. Um, I'm even curious about the Fiano. Yes. I gotta go for the cellar, the museum release Chardonnay that's open. Yeah, yeah, of course. You want to Let's see, I can go back to this. I know. No, you can't. I know. Okay. I like that. I know this is pretty. That one's well done. Mm -hmm. That's really well done. Hold you. 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 Hold Hitting all the regions nice. in Australia. Well, most of them. We just went came to Swan. Yeah. Swan Valley. Well, the highlights there. Oh, we really like any like variety. Our favorite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our favorite properties there. Yeah. Let's start with the with the Wednesday bottle, the original. Yeah. You said the Wednesday bottle. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wine you can afford to open on the Wednesday. What's a Monday bottle? Same one. Same bottle. Same bottle. You just don't admit that you open wine on Mondays. That's <laughs> <laughs> Means you didn't have a big enough weekend. Uh, drinking on Monday. So you're supposed to have at least one day to have a good hard thing to your life. <laughs> so is it good for this wine blocking? We just started. It's yeah. It's just something we're adding into our repertoire. We have we own an online business. We do consulting, marketing, advertising for, for the wine, mainly the wine industry, but okay. alcohol industry, tourism, hospitality. Okay. All the fun things. All the fun yeah. things. And where's when? Uh, it's parked in the parking lot. <laughs> Where nice. the van is, yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, she, she actually did build that on it. Yeah. Yeah. And? It's good. It's all right. So far. It's still held together. Yeah. It hasn't fallen apart yet. The wine glasses keep breaking. Oh. That's not up. That's not my fault though. You need to find a more resilient glass. Wow. The reels just don't. Oh, oh yeah. They, they don't, you can't even dry them without them. Well, that's what happened last night, didn't you? This morning. Oh, yeah, this morning. And stepping up to Friday. Wine, yep. 
That's right. We're ready for Friday. This is the single vineyard. The Juniper Estate Vineyard, formerly Wright's, was planted in 1973 and together with Vasse Felix, Kate Mantell, Cullen, Mosswood and Woodlands is one of the founding vineyards of the region. Producing small batch and boutique style wines, we got to explore some staple classics and also try some fun and creative stuff. Between the standout hospitality and the incredible wines, we were very happy with this recommendation. That's a good one. This is nice. Pretty. So have you tried the wines before? Never. No. 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 From here or I've raised them. Uh. Way, way east. Howard Park is a larger winery with four different lines available in their tasting room. We actually ended up there by mistake. We were told to visit Fishbone Winery and pulled into this place as one of their labels is called Mad Fish. Howard Park wines are focused on their Margaret River and Great Southern vineyards. All the wines were pretty good, but they weren't really to our style as a whole. We found them to be a bit simple for the wine styles that we prefer. However, there was one wine that we'd like to share with you. But first... What wine is it? If you like cheese like we do, and particularly sheep's cheese, you'll want to scout out Cambrai cheese from Western Australia. We stumbled across their sheep's milk manchego style cheese when wine tasting at Howard Park Winery in Margaret River. So in true foodie style, we hunted down their creamery located in Cundinup, WA. They have numerous cheeses to taste on site, ranging from cream breeze to strong blues, with a range of other local delicacies like truffle items from Manjumup, one of the best truffle producing regions in the world, by the way. Focus in, focus in. Mm. Yes. Is that it? Yes. That is heaven. That's what it's supposed to be. The Scottsdale Cabernet Sauvignon is made with selected fruit from the Abercrombie Vineyard located in Mount Barker, a sub-region in the Great Southern. This wine had bright red and black fruits and great acidity with a polished tannin profile. We picked up a bottle as we thought it filled a niche in the wines that we were collecting, something a little brighter and easier to drink without requiring a big meal or a long decant time. The, the Scottsdale's got some high points, it's got a high tannin point, it's got a high fruit point, it's got a high complexity. It Herbations, peaks out, yeah. yeah. I think, first of all, the place the cab is Kunawara, and we have, we both have never been to Kunawara. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't vouch for that. I remember last time I came to Margaret River, babe, I was living in Franklin, right? Right. And I was doing harvest there, and I was thinking, I can't wait to go to Margaret River. I'm going to the place of wine in Australia. And I remember coming here and trying wine after wine after wine, being like, what I can get back in the Great Southern shits on this wine. That's yeah, and what that might I be remember. absolutely fair. It might be absolutely fair. I'm like, I, I'm still waiting to be wowed. Like, there's good wines I have not yet been wowed. Cape Grace is a small, family-owned winery located near Cullen and Vasse Felix on the northern end of the Margaret River wine region. We popped into this space as a spur-of-the-moment decision and we were happily surprised with our choice. The family has been a part of the Margaret River region since 1875 and the vineyards there were planted in 1996. They manage it under organic principles and the wines are truly handcrafted. Rachel, Matthew, Chloe. Hi. Hi Rachel. What kind of wines do you like? Yes. Yes, and yourself? Yes. Great. So, um, Shannon Block is the first to try today. So we do a range of um, styles based on what goes well in our vineyard. Yep. So in 96 they first planted. This is a, a clean, bright, fresh, simple wine. Great with simple fruits. So anything you put a squeeze of lemon on. Won gold medal in the Shannon Challenge a couple of weeks ago in Swan Valley. Not a great that a lot of people do around here, so it was planted because the owner, Rob and Karen, like drinking it 
and mm -hmm. it's a famous grape from the Loire Valley in France. I love that. I don't know what Fajo is. Is it what? I mean, uh, it's a kiwi. Pineapple guava. Pineapple guava. It's from South America, but it's extremely popular in New Zealand. Okay. Well, you say it's. I, I told you it's yeah. when I was working in the vineyard there. There was the lady with the fajoa hedge around it. We'd go pick them up. She'd sell them on the. She'd sell them on the street for like ten bucks a pouch. And I bought them one day, and I told her I was like, "Oh, I bought some." And she's like, "What are you doing? Just pick them up off the ground." <laughs> They would have been stealing in the Swan Valley and then Margaret River picked up, picked up gold. Wow. <laughs> yeah. right, best producers, Greater Perth, Paul Conti, Margaret River, Amberley, Aravena, Cape Grace, Devil's Lair, Island Brook, Plan B, Stormflower, Springs Roundabouts, Voyager Estate, Swan Valley, Coward and Black, Hayford Glen, mm. Peel Estate, Sitella. Um, Sitella. We, we Swan Valley wines. We, we drink their Swan. We sparkling drink their Shannon. Shannon. We got yeah. this. We got this sparkling twice. Shannon twice. Yeah. So let me tell you that Mark Messenger was the wine consultant here okay. for quite some time. Oh, so, was he? Yes. Yeah, so, so this is a little bit of an anomaly, a wine that you don't see a lot of. <laughs> and being a 100% I'll tell you that, so it's not a blend. I think the vinification is a new vintage, so I'm pretty sure it's 50% um, new oak again. So it's got that power from that. It's got that power, it's green now, the pyrazines are really high on mm. it. But this says Cabernet Franc all over the nose to me. Yeah. The are super high. And I thought I'd pour it for you, I wasn't pepper. going to. It's not the line up here. Mm. But. I used to work with a producer in Washington State, Dick Boucher. Mm -hmm who is so well known for his Cabernet Franc. Um, the, the, the amazing the old school farmer. And every time we bought Cabernet Franc from him, he'd, he'd always say, if you think it's ready, wait a week. <laughs> if you think if it's you ready, ready to pick, wait, wait a week. Wait and the too. pyrazines will fall out, you'll lose that bell pepper, and wait, you'll just you get really this. Do you really want to lose that though? It depends entirely? on the style you're trying to go for. You're never going to lose See, it entirely. Not many mine makers like to talk about capsicum here. Yeah. So it's not really <coughs> a true varietal expression of what what, what most I, wine makers I know are trying to uh, look for. They're looking more for cassis, black currant, yeah. sort of probably herbaceousness, but not at the compromise of um, green. We ended up taking a few bottles home with us from Cape Grace. The Cabernet Franc was a real interest for us, so of course one had to come home. The Shiraz showed some real finesse with some classic Rhone characteristics, so we bought one of those to take home with us as well. What's cooking good looking? <laughs> 